<coughs> what led to to the to the South African Republic? Mm-hmm. Was it because that the after 1960 the Prime the, the Minister of of Britain came to Parliament and said that the winds of change are born in the African continent? So don't you think that the, the Britain was going to give full independence to to the to, to South Africa? But then the, the African nationalism take a lead by running that independence to them, to themselves, so that they can have power over the blacks. Yeah, well, you know, they, they already, it was all this theoretical. The um, black South Africans were already so completely uh, um, uh, under the control of the, of the, of the white state. Uh, there was no need actually um, to further uh, get any further uh, legal ammunition, legal machinery. It was the arrogance of um, the uh, apartheid state, uh, for Wood particularly, that we can go it alone. There's no need for this. You see, they had their own nationalist movement. The Afrikaners had their own nationalist movement. So. They actually should have understand, and I hope they understand, whoever still sees themselves as African nationalists now, understand what uh, blacks were struggling for. Because they saw themselves as having defeated the British, or, and been defeated by the British, and then defeat the British again. Um, so in 1910, you know, they, they, after the Anglo-Boer War, defeated the Anglo-Boer War, then they had 1910, and then they, uh, later on they came to win elections, so the 48th election of the Africa Nationalist Party. So uh, in their um, perception, they were basically a nationalist movement against the British and against the British settlers. So you see, so for them, uh, 19, uh, uh, declaring a republic was a kind of high point of their nationalist movement that we now have it, have it all. Uh, blacks did not matter. And what happened after that, of course, is how to deal with the black majority, push them into more, into the bantus, into the reserves, and then when they saw this was really impractical, they upgrade the reserves to Bantustans, and then independent states, you know, where Siskai, uh, all these things, tra- uh, Transkai, Bapututswana, they increasingly came to see that it was untenable, it was just not possible to deal with all these people. We're such a small minority. So create these fake states, completely failed uh, uh, nonsense institutions there, didn't care at all, and only allow blacks in to come into the town, into the towns if they had a dom pass, if they had a the rights and it was untenable it was just I mean what did these people think they just lived in a, in a world of their own that this co- could not go on forever that you had what eight nine percent of the population white and to to continue and against the grain in terms of African history and the continent which you know, the only two places which still had white minority rule was South Africa and and Rhodesia. And Rhodesia fell by 1980. You see, for a long time they felt Southern Africa may have been, uh, have given them a false sense because uh, the colonialism lasted here for longer with, yeah. the, with the Portuguese falling only in 75. The rest of Africa goes in the late 50s and 60s, early 60s, 63 in Kenya, but only 75 in, you know, in, in, in Mozambique, 75 in uh, Angola, 1980. It's a late, it's actually much later, 20 years after other countries get, you know, 1980. And, and remember Ian Smith believed, and he said in the late 70s, a black man will never rule this country, not in a thousand years. Not in a thousand. So the sense that South Africa was in good company, you know, by 1960, because the Portuguese were in uh, in these places, 
um, the, the Rodisha was there. These are all like us, colonial uh, settler state types, you know. So it's important that's, uh, for us to have a regional sense of it, to have a regional sense of our, of our history. Because our movements also interacted with these movements. 